Well, welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And as y'all can see, we are about to start our blower door test. We'll go ahead and fire this up, run it, and then I'll tell you all about it and why it's required in order for us to get our CO. It just ramps up and down and takes readings. It probably stay right at 90, minus 50 pascals. Okay. With two of those holes open and probably fluctuates a little more, but you can see now it's staying right at 50. It just, when I crunk it up, it takes it a minute to get there. Right. Watch this. So you open the window to show you see the see CFM. You see where that thing's going now? So that small of a leak in a home. Wow, I can feel it coming and through. And you feel the air coming in here. That's right. You know, it's like a, a whole house fan home. It had to go up almost double the CFM just for that small of a leak. That's crazy. No, you're you're exactly you know right. Just just a few leaks in a home can equal that. That's a good representation right there, without a doubt. Pressurizes again or depressurizes and gets it right, and then it'll stay steady. You can walk around if you got any questions. The ones coming in, right? Kind of feel for it. Exterior walls on a house that's got fiber that bad. You can put your hand up to this right here, and you can feel the air coming through there. Here, you're not feeling nothing. All the windows, you know, you can. These are all sealed good. There's nothing. I can tell you there's nothing coming through by what I'm getting on that right there. Right. Somebody went up in an attic and busted a hole out through there and ran a wire and didn't say nothing. We run into that all the time. Actually, I did that the other day for that repeater, but I went right behind and foamed it right back as tight as I could get it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, so that was an interesting process with a lot of good information. And by the way, that was Mr. Neil Autry. I just didn't want to shove the camera up in his face, but he is the owner or, of North Florida Spray Foam. He's the one that spray foam in our house and I had his crew come out. He also does blower door tests. By the way, I paid full price for insulation, full price for the testing today, but I'll put his information down there if you're in the North Florida, North Central Florida, or South Georgia area. He services a wide variety of counties and uh, the price has thus far been excellent. The workmanship has. I just believe in pushing and promoting people that do what they say they're gonna do and do a good job. Again, I got paid nothing for saying that. So as you can see, he brought in what was an aluminum frame that sets up on the inside frame of the door itself. And then you wrap it in that plastic and then it's got some pieces where you can kind of ratchet it out up and seal that plastic to the doorway. So essentially building yourself, well, kind of a plastic or vinyl door. Everything else is Velcroed. So the fan actually Velcroed straight into a hole that's designed for it. And then he's got that little I don't know if it's called a manometer or what that meter is, but it reads kilopascals, air pressure differences, um, as well as it also takes CFM readings off of that fan. And it can do a calculation and give you what's called an, I think it's ACH, I hope I'm saying all this correctly, which is air changes per hour. So when he first come in, he had to take measurements of wall height, do some calculations, basically a volume calculation of the size home that it is. And then he'll take all those numbers from the CFM to the kilopascal rating and crunch that down. So ultimately what you're looking at is how many air changes per hour a home does. That seems crazy to me because there's a ton of volume in here. If it's looking at the true volume calculation, 
and I may be a little off with what some of the stuff I'm saying here, but according to uh, Mr. Neal, it's only been pushed in our area for the last 24 months. It's now code and mandatory, and our state only requires a seven air change an hour rating. That's crazy. That's an unbelievably leaky home. Seven complete air changes in an hour. You would have to have some pretty massive leaks. So it seems almost impossible to not pass this test unless you've built a horrible home. He says going right across the state line up into Georgia, for example, their requirements are much more strict. They want a three air change per hour measurement or less. So the lower the number, the better, the less air changes, the less turnover you have, or you do not qualify up there. That sounds like a much better number in my mind, but all this is new, it's kind of being implemented. Um, and ultimately what this is doing, this is the state and local municipalities way of holding builders accountable for building a better sealed home. We had a relatively long conversation about this leaky home theory that's kind of an old school way of thinking personally, at least that's how I see it. You always hear a leaky house is a good house because it turns your air over. And if y'all have watched me build this house, I don't believe in that or buy into that for one second at all. Yes, you can seal a home up too, too well. You absolutely can. But that's where fresh air intakes come in. I want to control the air that's coming into my home, the location it comes in, when it comes in. For example, our dehumidifier has a large six inch air intake. Anytime it kicks on, which is often in Florida, much as I'm open to closing the door, it's controlling the humidity in this tightly sealed home because, well, our HVAC never runs. It's insulated so well. But anytime that dehumidifier kicks on, it pulls fresh air in through a six inch intake and it exits it out through another six inch exit, which our bathroom vent fans are also tied into. So it's a constant turnover of fresh air in a home. That's why people say a very well sealed home can be dangerous. You can have high radon levels, which is kind of a, a gas buildup level. Um, you can get stagnant air in here, stale, doesn't smell good. Well, there's ways to control that. So as his saying was, seal tight, vent right. I 100% agree with that. Because this leaky home theory is not energy efficient. State's catching on to that. It's throwing money literally out the leaky window, out the leaky wall plates. So you're, this is why people are having extremely high electric bills. Well, they're pulling air in and sending it right out and their HVAC system is working overtime. But the biggest thing is that a lot of people don't talk about is, well, a leaky home, that's places for ants, roaches, all kinds of insects and everything else to come in as well. I want none of that. That's why I went above and beyond to seal this house the way that I did. From floor plates to sealing all the studs with caulk to seam taping all my joints on my sheathing on the outside, the list goes on and on and on. And luckily, Mr. Neal said he could already tell this is an extremely tight and very well sealed home. Now, the equipment that he just tested, it can work with his phone on a program there. He was having issues with that today, so I didn't get the number, although I'm gonna include it before I release this video. He's going back to crunch all those numbers now, but here's the thing. He could already tell by the uh, pressure reading and how low of CFM that fan was pushing out. He said, that this is just a, a super tight, very well sealed home. That makes me feel good. I spent a lot of extra time, attention, and money in sealing this home to not throw my money out the window. So from a lot of y'all that are in the industry um, that do construction, some of y'all are general contractors and talk to me and deal with us all the time, I've heard pretty much anything in the three range or less is considered a moderately sealed home. When you start getting close to that one air change an hour or even less, less if that's possible, you have an extremely tight and very well sealed home. But again, you need to manage that. You need to allow some sort of air turnover in your home. Most people seem to think opening windows and opening and closing doors throughout the day is enough air turnover. Possibly could be, unless you're in, like say, a high radon area. But I still agree, a fresh air intake on your HVAC system, your dehumidifier, or something like an ERV, an energy recovery ventilator, is uh, definitely needed. So I love the demonstration that he gave. Hopefully you can hear that on that little camera with the fan and all running. But he, that fan had little open holes that he could pop open 
to pull air in. And he said, on your standard home that has regular fiber, fiberglass insulation, well, that's a relatively leaky home because it doesn't seal all the nooks, crannies, and crevices like an actual blown in and expanded foam does. So typically he has to pull the majority of those plugs out of that fan in order to pull enough airflow out of a home to get a certain pressure reading on that meter that he had. So what that meter is doing is it's trying to maintain, I think it was minus 50 kilopascals if I remember correctly, because this was a vacuum test on the house. And then um, it's whatever CFM of the fan to maintain that. The lower the CFM, the less the fan's running, like in my case, the better the sealed home is because, well, it's not moving air out of these nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices out the door. It's not able to pull it in, that's a good thing. So he showed that demonstration there. When he cracked this window, maybe one half of an inch, the fan speed had to double in order to maintain that minus 50 kilopascals. So did you see that? One gap, 30 some odd inches across, half of an inch. That's not much of a leak and it dramatically increased how quick that fan had to run. So think about a little gap, like he was saying, one of the worst spots he sees is whenever people do like exterior plugs around a home or even on the interior, when they have leaks all on the wall, you can literally feel air coming out of your outlets, out of your receptacles. So if you were to have a little small hole there or a tiny crack here underneath your bottom plates, one there, one there, you add those up throughout the house, it does not take many leaks to equal that tiny little gap that he had there. And you could see the dramatic change in airflow. When he opened it on up a couple of inches, now that's a pretty significant leak at that point, but I could see people having that with penetrations to the roof everywhere else. The fan couldn't even keep up. He was going then would have to remove more plugs to really increase the uh, velocity airflow of the fan. So that was just a little demonstration that he was given there. And it really hit home with me about the size of the gaps and openings. And it does not take much to make a very leaky home. So the beautiful thing is, that was the second to last thing that I need for our certificate of occupancy. The last thing I'm waiting on now is the power company to show up. I'm already on their schedule. They just don't have a day yet. It could be any day now, or it could be two weeks from now. I just don't know yet. As soon as they hook up permanent power, we've got our CO. So Mr. Neal's gonna go home and crunch those numbers, get me the official paperwork over tonight that I have to turn into the building department. And, uh, I'll kick this camera back on and let you know. But again, anything under three is a very well-sealed home and pass the majority of state testing. I'm not gonna be satisfied with that. I wanna see better for all the time, energy, and effort that I put into this home. So if we can start getting down around that one range, I think I'll be very happy with how well-sealed this house is. Okay, so it is next morning and I just got my official paperwork in to send to the building department. This was for the blower door test results. And on this, uh, it's what's called a quality assurance report, single point blower door test. The first thing I see, pass in big green letters. I really like that. So there's calculations on here from floor area to your envelope area to overall volume of the house. You had to come in and measure and calculate all that out yesterday. And then obviously take the pressure readings, the CFM readings and do some sort of calculation there to get our air change per hour number. So I have that official number. Are y'all ready for this? This is the kind of stuff <laughs> that really gets me going. I really enjoy this. So again, Florida requires seven air changes an hour or less. That's the entire volume of the home. That sounds super leaky, but that's all they require right now. At least they're moving forward in the right direction. Don't forget, Georgia requires three air changes an hour or less, according to the guy that ran my test. So I have been told if you can get anywhere near a one, which seems to be very hard to do, you have an extremely well sealed home. So my numbers just come in at 0.64 air changes an hour. That is 0 0.64 air changes an hour. Talking with a friend that's a general contractor, builds really nice custom homes over on the beach. He says that's probably one of the best numbers this guy's ever gotten. Now, this guy had to go home to crunch these numbers because his phone that crunches this data was not communicating with his equipment yesterday uh, for some weird reason. So he ran it in manual mode and just calculates the numbers like how he used to do before technology popped up and, well, sometimes doesn't work. So I didn't get to ask him, but I could tell by his reaction yesterday when he was looking at the CFM rating on the fan, no more holes than he had to open on the fan 
to pull a volume of air out of the house. He told me, he says, normally I have to open up way more holes than this. He said, especially on fiberglass homes, he has to pull all the plugs out of the fan usually and really ramp it up. He said, there's just a night and day difference between how well sealed a spray foam home is and a fiberglass home. So I was already feeling pretty good yesterday when he was looking at the, the fan speed up there and saying, you hear how quiet it is? It's barely running. It's barely pulling nothing. So as my friend said, that's a testament to how I built this home. Um, if you've watched this journey the whole step away, you know I've went above and beyond on sealing every seam, every joint, every bottom plate, everything I could possibly do. Because again, as this guy said, you want to uh, seal tight and vent right. I want to control what comes to my home. No doubt turning over air is critical and something you need to do in your house. But I want to pull outside air from a single location and I want it to run through a nice HEPA filter that I have up there in uh, my home dehumidifier unit. Really nice big filter. I don't want to pull in from every nook and cranny and window out here, pulling in roaches, bugs of all kinds, pollen and everything else. So I am super excited with the results here. I know this wasn't a very fancy video, but a lot of y'all been very curious about this. But what's critical is this was the second to last step for me to get our CO. So I'm about to email this paperwork over to the building department, along with pictures of a few things that I've repaired that they asked, uh, you know, two little changes they found in the final inspection. And we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs, waiting on the power company. As soon as we get permanent power, we're done. We're good, we can officially move in. Now that doesn't mean we're done with the house. So far from it. So many projects to do from the porch to painting the house to guess what? Well, spoiler alert, next video, I have already started building out Tiffany's custom closet. So we're gonna have to do that. The pantry, the laundry closet, the list goes on and on and on. Then we're gonna get some fun projects outside from the deck to the pool, to the fire pit patio. List just keeps going. We have so many fun projects coming. So thank y'all for watching. I am elated, I'm excited. Um, that was better results than I could have ever expected. Uh, makes me feel really good about the work that I did leading up to this point. Catch you on the next video.